Assume you can invest $6,000 at 3.63% simple interest or 3.1% compounded interest where the interest is compounded annually. The equation for simple interest is A equals P plus P times R times D. And the equation for compounded interest annually is A equals P times the quantity one plus R raised to the power of T. So notice that below S of T is the account balance using simple interest where we have A equals P plus P times R times T. And C of T would be the account balance using compound interest where we'd have A equals P times the quantity one plus R raised to the power of T. Looking at our simple interest formula again, let's check to make sure that 217.8 really is the principal or $6,000 times the simple interest rate of 3.63%. So we'd have 6,000 times 3.63% as a decimal would be 0.0363. So notice how this is where the 217.8 comes from. And now for the next step, we want to complete this table for the various values of t. We'll do this on the calculator. So we'll enter s of t in y1 and we'll enter y sub 1 equals 6,000 plus 217.8x instead of t. And for c of t, we'll enter y sub two equals 6,000 times one plus zero, three, one, raised to the power of x. So we'll press y equals. If you have any old functions, you do want to clear those. Again, y one is going to be 6,000 plus 217 0.8x, enter, and y sub two is going to be 6,000 times 1.031, close parenthesis, raised to the power of x, enter. And now we'll complete this table using the table on the calculator. But we do want to set up the table, so let's press second window. And we'll start the table at one, since that's the first value of t, or on the calculator x, and now we want to make sure that the independent variable is set to ask, not automatic. So we'll arrow down. If ask is not highlighted, we would highlight it and then press enter. And now we'll go to the table by pressing second graph. And notice how I've already entered the x values here, but if they weren't here, we would just enter one, enter, five, enter, 10, enter, and so on. And now we can complete this table using the table on the calculator. But there's one thing to be careful about. The table is only going to show five digits at the most, so we do want to check the exact function values by arrowing over and highlighting each value. When we do this, the actual value, or the true value, will show below here. So again, these first five function values would be the account balance using simple interest or the values of S of t. So we have one, two, three, four, five. In this case, the table is showing the exact values. Let's go ahead and record these. And now we'll check the values for C of T. Again, we are asked to round to two decimal places if needed. So we'll go up and highlight the first function value of Y sub two, which is really C of T when X or T equals one. So here's the exact value. Now looking at the next value, when x is five, notice how the table only shows 0.5, but that's not the value we want to use because if we run to two decimal places, looking below, notice how it would really be 0.48. So it would be 6,989.48, not 0.5. This is why it's so important to highlight each value on this table and check them below. Next, notice how the value is not going to be 8,142.1, it's going to be 8,142.13. Checking the next value, the decimal part would be 0.87, and then our fifth and final function value is not 11,049, it's 11,049.04. Let's go ahead and record these function values. So you may recall in a previous video, I did show how to find function values on the home screen. Rather than using the table, 
Using the home screen, we don't have to worry about highlighting each of these values and checking them below. For example, if we wanted to check y sub 2 of 20, which is really c of 20 from the home screen, let me go ahead and just show that. Go back to the home screen by pressing second mode. We could press vars, right arrow, enter, and then option two for y sub two, then in parentheses, 20. And notice how by using the home screen, we'll always get the exact function value, which we can then round. So there's more than one way to determine the function values for a table. Now we do have one more question to address. Part B says, at the end of what year will the accrued value account earning compound interest, or C of T, be higher than the accrued value of the account paying simple interest, or S of T? If we want to complete the sentence, the investments earning compounded interest will have a higher accrued value at the end of what year? So going back to our table, notice how the compound interest, notice how the balance using compound interest is higher at year 15, but it's lower at year 10. So somewhere between year 10 and year 15, the balance in the compound interest account becomes larger than the balance in the account using simple interest. So what we'll do is go back to the calculator and change the table to look at the years from 10 through 15. So we'll press the second graph. And again, we're gonna go back to the table on the far left for the values of x, start at 10, and then increase the value by one until we reach the year 15. So 10, enter, 11, enter, 12, enter, 13, enter, 14, enter, and let's go ahead and go to 15. So 15 and enter. We want to determine at the end of what year is y sub two greater than y sub one. Well at a year 11, the simple interest is still slightly higher. At the end of year 12, notice how y sub two is larger. So our answer is, at the end of year 12, the compounded interest account will be higher. So this is true at the end of year 12. I hope you found this helpful.